Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be making these long exposure sparkler scenes and sparkler animations. So in photography these are made by uh, lighting a sparkler and spinning them round and round and round and setting your camera to a long exposure, say 20-30 seconds or even a bulb setting and just recording these light trails. So in this Blender tutorial we're going to try and recreate this effect using motion blur parameters. You can also make these animations here where you slightly extend the normal motion blur parameter and you get these sort of like streaks to get this nice effect here. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just delete all the, the standard cube, the camera and the light from the scene. I'm going to press Shift A Mesh Plane and that's going to create a, a plane for us and I'm just going to scale that up. Press N just to get my transform parameters up here and I'm going to set the dimensions to 100 meters. I'm also going to press Ctrl and A to apply my scale so that it brings these scale values back to values of 1. Now we want to use this plane for the little embers from the sparkler to fall on to so I'm going to go to my physics tab here and I'm going to click on my plane and press enable physics for collision so that will give something for our embers to fall onto and we'll come back and adjust these parameters later. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create an empty object so again I'm going to press shift A come down here and go to empty plane axes and I'm just going to drag this up a bit so I'm going to press G and Z just bring it above the collision surface here and this is what we're going to use to control the motion of the sparkler so we're going to spin the empty around and that's going to spin our sparkler which is going to be our particle source around so I'm going to make a, a particle source now which is just going to be a UV sphere so shift A mesh UV sphere and again I'm just going to press G and Z and I'm going to bring it just above the empty object here maybe just a little bit more and I'm going to press S to scale and I'm going to bring that down probably to about let's bring that down to 0.3 meters and I might actually just bring that down a bit so GZ and just bring it down to about that point above the empty now I'm going to parent the um, particle source, the sphere, to the empty. So I'm going to first click the sphere, shift click on the empty and press Control P and set parent to object. So now if we click the uh, empty here and press R and Y to rotate around the Y axis you can see the particle source now rotates around the empty and that will allow us to make that spinning sparkler effect. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a particle system for this particle um, object here. So if you come over here to the right, click the particle properties and press plus to add a new particle system. So I'm just going to say increase the number of particles to 2000. We also want to have uh, something that we can render as the embers for our particle source. So I'm just going to press shift A. I'm going to create a second UV sphere and I'm just going to press G and just sort of drag it away so it's out away from my scene. We can even rename this as Ember. And let's add a material to it. So new material, I'm going to make it an emission and I'm going to increase the strength to something like 50. And let's change the color to something, maybe a reddish orange color. And we'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, so go back to the sphere, our first one. Uh, if that'll be under the empty because it's now parented to the empty. And perhaps rename that um, spark. And then if you go back to the particle properties, we want to set the ember object to be emitted from our particle system. So click on this render tab, render as object, instance object, ember. And I'm just going to reduce the scale to something like 0 0.02. 
So let's just press play and see what happens. Okay, so the first problem is the sparkler isn't actually spinning. So let's fix that up first. So the way I did this was just use some drivers in these transform properties. So I want to rotate the sparkler around the Y axis, which is this green axis. So you can do this by clicking on the Y and typing hash frame. So if I just type frame, so this is going to say that the rotation angle of the parent object is equal to the frame number. So if I just press enter on that now, it changes to purple, which means it has a driver attached to it. And now if I just press play, you can see the particle source is spinning around and around, but that looks like it's a little bit too quick. So I'm going to go back up to the rotation and let's say divide frame by five. And maybe that's a little bit too slow. So let's say divided by three. So that's looking pretty good now. Now, if you think about if you were doing this in real life, spinning a sparkler around, um, you're not going to be able to hold it with the same uh, radius of rotation at all times. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of randomness in the height. So make this parent object uh, increase and decrease in height. And you can do that again with the drivers. So I'm going to go to the Z location and I'm going to go hash and I'm going to use a sine function. So it oscillates above the Z position and go sine of frame. Now this is going to oscillate very quickly, so I'm going to slow this down. What's in the brackets is essentially going to be the frequency that it's oscillating at. So I want to slow that frequency a bit and let's say divide by five. Now I'm close bracket. And I also want to decrease the amplitude of this oscillation. So I'm going to divide by three, which is outside the brackets and just press enter. Now you can see what's happened. The Z has gone down to the 3D cursor, which is at the 0, 0, 0 coordinates. But I actually want to bring it up a bit. So I'm going to add an offset, so plus, and let's say add 4.5. And you can see that's brought it up a bit. So let's just go through the timeline and just see if that's enough height. And you can see it's pretty good. It's just sitting just above the ground plane at its lowest point now, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just play now. And you can see the parent is now oscillating up and down, which is giving us that nice sort of semi-realistic motion. Um, but I think the amplitude is probably a little bit too much. So let's go back up to the Z and let's divide by five. Let's have a look at that now. So that's looking pretty good now. So I'm gonna do all this in Eevee. So just make sure your render engine is set to Eevee. We want to turn on Bloom, which will give you that, let's just play the timeline, give you that nice glow effect. And let's go back to the particle system. So I'm going to click on my sparkler sphere, go back to my particles, and let's have a look at the velocity. So I'm going to decrease the normal velocity to zero. I want the sparklers to be sort of pushed along the direction uh, that the sparkler is being rotated. So I'm going to add a little bit of object velocity. So that means the sparkler, the embers will come off the sparkler um, at a speed that's proportional to the rotation speed. So let's try 0.2 and I'm going to add a bit of tangent velocity, just maybe 0.15 and maybe just add a little bit of normal 0.15 and let's see how that looks. So that's looking pretty good. But you can see there's a problem with the ground plane here. So you can see that the embers are just bouncing off and sliding all over the ground plane. So we want to fix that. So if you click your ground plane, go to your physics properties, and you want to use the damping, which will affect how much the embers bounce when they hit the surface, and the friction, which will affect how much they slide across the surface. So let's increase the dampening to, let's try point, about point 0.6 and increase friction to, let's say, 0.3. And let's rerun the simulation and see what that looks like. So you can see that looks a bit more realistic. Maybe there's a little bit too much friction. Let's drop that to 0.2, reset. That's looking a bit better. 
but you can see most of the embers are constrained to this one rotation plane. So let's try and add a bit more, uh, probably the tangential velocity. So let's increase tangent to 0.4 and let's have a look at that. Okay, that's spreading it out a little bit more. Let's try the normal velocity. And that looks pretty good. While we're at it, we'll just add a camera to the scene. And I'll just zero that out, zero that rotation. I want that at about 90. And let's just adjust the height just so we frame it. Zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is try and simulate some of those, the blurring effects that you get from a long exposure photograph. So you can do that just by ticking on motion blur here in the render properties. And normally your shutter would default to a half a frame, but because we're trying to simulate a long exposure photograph, we want to increase this to something like 50. And you also want to increase the number of interpolation steps on that. So let's increase that to say 100 and increase max blur. Uh, let's increase that to 512 pixels. And I'm gonna lower the background separation to about 10. So I'm gonna go back to the particle system. Let's click on the little sphere. And I'm just gonna bake out this simulation. So go to cache and go bake. I'm gonna, let's say do a five second animation. So let's go from frame 1 to frame 125 there. And we also want to change the start frame from to 1 and end frame to 125. Let's, we want the lifetime to be about 75. And let's make the randomness about 0.2. And let's bake that out and see what that looks like. So that's looking pretty good now. Let's just press render and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. You can see these little speckled effects here and that's because we haven't got enough um, steps in our motion blur. So if you go back to there, to your render properties, motion blur, let's increase steps to 250. And I'm also just gonna add a material to my ground plane here. I'm just gonna go new material. Let's make it a bit more metallic. Let's reduce the roughness, drop the specular a bit and change it to a dark gray color. Maybe a little bit darker. Uh, I'm also just going to add a, a back plane here. So I'm going to go to click on my um, ground plane, go to edit mode with the tab. I'm going to click on this with the edge select, this back plane that's where the camera is facing, and press E to extrude, press Z to lock it to the Z axis, and just bring it up so we've got a bit of a backdrop. Then I'm going to click on this uh, crease here and I'm gonna press Control B to bevel, and that'll just bring that out a bit. Press your bevel properties here and increase the number of segments to say 20, and just play around with the width until you're happy with it. And we've got this nice smooth corner here. And press Tab to exit edit mode. Then I'm gonna go over here to the modifiers and I'm just gonna add a subdivision surface. Switch to simple and increase the number of viewport um, subdivisions to two. And that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to drag this uh, ember object just a bit further out of the scene so you can't see it. And I'm actually going to add some randomization to the texture just to give it a bit more detail. So I'm going to drag out a window here, switch this to the shader editor, and I'm just going to connect a simple noise texture and I'm going to connect the fraction into the roughness. And you can start to see this detail here. I'm just going to increase that to, let's just change back to the camera view here and see what that looks like. Maybe try at 50. I'm also just going to increase the metallic a bit. Oh, you want to go up to your render, uh, render properties and turn on screen space reflections as well. 
and that'll give you kind of look like a wet surface behind the sparklers. And that looks pretty good. Let's just play around with the roughness. Just going to drop that a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to close the shader window now. Okay, let's press render, render image and see what that looks like now. So with the increased number of steps in the motion blur, this render time can increase quite a bit. So you just have to be patient. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. So I think I might try increasing the number of steps to 350. Um, going to go to my background world settings. I'm going to make it a bit darker. And I'm going to go to my ember object and change its strength up to, let's say, 200. And let's just save that scene out just before we render it. Sparkler 2. Okay, let's render it again and have a look. And that's looking pretty good now. I think I'm happy with most of the settings. The only thing I might just increase is the number of steps again further because you can see these little dots indicating that we're probably not sampling at enough points. So let's increase that one more time. Actually, before we do that, you might want to go to your render properties. So you've got this option for motion uh, position center on frame. So that's going to say, I'm going to render with 50 uh, frames averaged over uh, between 100 and 150 and zero and 100. So I'm actually gonna change this to end on frame. And I think we can leave all the rest. I'm gonna increase my render samples to say 128. And let's give that one more final render. And there you have it, there's the finished product. So a single still frame with a long motion blur time, like 50 to 100 uh, frames, gives you this nice streaked effect. Uh, but you might find that you want to do like an animation, for example. So I'll just show you some of the settings you might want to use for that. So if we just close this. Now for an animation, I'd suggest that perhaps you decrease the shutter to something like 20. And because you've reduced the number of uh, frames that you're averaging over, you can decrease the number of steps correspondingly. So you might want to reduce this to say, 150 frames and let's just change our render settings so let's just change the output directory two forward slashes just means output the animation in the same directory as the blend file I'm going to change that to an FF MPEG video encoder I'm going to change container to MPEG4 and let's just change to perceptual lossless and just for this test I'm going to reduce the resolution by 50% and let's see what that looks like okay so the animations finished let's just have a look at the video now there you have it there's the animation Kind of looks a bit like a Doctor Strange effect from Marvel. If your other Blender projects are taking a long time to render and you are using cycles, be sure to check out my other YouTube videos on how to use Google Colab to accelerate your Blender renders for free. Thank you for taking the time to watch this YouTube video. If you like this or any of my other tutorials, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll be uploading more Blender tutorials in the weeks to come.